Good day, McBay, and happy Tuesday. How are you, boys and girls? So, hmm, let's see. Happy birthday today to Madeline Tellerman in our fourth grade, Luis Guzman Cabrera in our third grade, and Grace Kay in our kindergarten. So, boys and girls, how are you? How are things going? I'm looking forward to our spring shake. We're going to shake it up starting on Thursday, boys and girls, with some cool projects. Could be science, could be a whole lot of good things. So let's get ready for our spring shake. All right. And I want to say, I saw some boys and girls outside. I don't know who they were because they were from a distance riding their bicycles. You know, I love to do that. And what I was so excited about was that they were wearing their helmets. Good work. So if that was you, high five. And let's touch base on our pink. So we had Savannah give us a new rendition of pink. She said people in the community needs to keep safe and, he and healthy. And she made a beautiful drawing. Good work, Savannah. I have another one tomorrow. So let's see. Pink. Think pink. And... Let's have an update on our mystery place. Name that place. So I've gotten lots of youngsters coming back and telling me, hmm, I think it's this, I think it's that. Some people thought Wyoming, Arizona, Nevada. So Alyssa, Mikhail, uh, let's see, Caitlin Compton. Hmm. One, California. It's not those. But I'm going to add one more clue today. This state, so we know that it has mountains, desert, and every year, on average, they get five feet of snow. Five feet. That's almost as tall as me. Imagine that. It's a lot of snow. So name that state. Let's see if somebody can come up with that. And how about our jokes? All right, here we go. So a couple of really cool ones today. So this one came in a while ago. Graham, I want to apologize. Uh, I skipped it. So, you ready? What do you call a sandwich at school? And what a great picture of a sandwich. A substitute. <laughs> So, so a sub in some places is called cool, is a the same name for a sandwich. So you can call it a sub or a hero. Nice gram. And all right. This one is coming from Menahil. Why did Coco go nuts? Now I love this because Menahil did it make this joke herself. So she drew a picture of Coco and of Coco going nuts. But the clue, take a look in the drawing. He was a coconut. <laughs> nice work, Manahil. Okay, Bobby Carroll's next. Bobby. Okay. So I have to um, cover this up because otherwise I give you the answer. So you ready? So, do you know why I don't like stairs? That's what Bobby says. Do you know why I don't like stairs? This is a play on words. I love this. Because they're always up to something. So when you're up to something, it means that you have something that you're uh, doing that nobody else knows. It's secretive. It might not be so good. Well done, Bobby. And then finally, Sebastian Mustafich. How do bees get to school? I love his drawing. Nice work, Sebastian. <laughs> Another play on words. By the school buzz. School buzz. Get it? Bees, they buzz. All right. Nice work, Sebastian. Now, boys and girls, I have a joke about mice. I don't want to give the rest. If it's yours, could you let me know so I can give you credit? Uh, I'd like to give you that shout out. Our joke book is coming along great. Now, I'm going to give you now a riddle 
we had a riddle last week, and now we have a new one. So, uh, what has many teeth, but never has any cavities? Many teeth, not many cavities. And this is coming from Sophia Oliveras. I'm not going to give you her drawing yet because it'll give it away. I want to see if you can figure that this out on your own. But thank you, Sophia. And she gave, sent me another one. So we have a couple already for this week. And now for our inventions. Let's just get to a couple of them. First, I want to do a shout out to Sophia. So uh, this is actually Sophia. I said Emily yesterday. I meant to say that. I'm sorry, Sophia. This is Sophia Cardali. And she made those muffins using fractions. And uh, I will have another entry tomorrow related to using fractions in the kitchen and making recipes. But Sophia, I'm going to get back to you in a, a minute because we had another Omni word from Sophia. But uh, this mor yesterday morning, I told you about an invention from Anna Cruz Amador. And it's a solar oven. So yeah, it, you have to imagine that it goes like this. You're not, it's not going to be a great picture of how it works. So here's what they did. So she made an oven out of tin foil. Now over here, boys and girls, is where the sun reflects and it reflects inside and they were able actually to bake in that oven. So solar energy is using the light from the sun to make heat or to make electricity. Or So they did this with just tin foil and a box. They made an oven. That's how warm the sun can get. And then they baked. Well done, Anna. Okay. So what are you inventing? And are you working on the science fair? I hope so. I can't wait to see all those projects because it's going to be super cool. And it's all using things that we have at home. And has anybody figured out why the yellow and the blue absorb more quickly than the red? Hmm. Remember, Carter showed us that experiment. Has anybody come up with that? Hmm. Now, let's get back to our words. So this morning I talked about omnidirectional. Nobody has responded as to what that means, but I have another omni word. Omnifarious comes from Sophia Cardali. Omnifarious. Hmm, that is a very advanced word. That's like one of those words you might see in the SAT test someday. Omnifarious. Hmm, what does that mean? Huh, because I want to talk about those suffixes, prefixes. So we have omnidirectional and omnifarious. All right, so that brings us, boys and girls, to our mighty kind moment of the day. So let's get our drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. So again, these are cards that the uh, faculty made at one of our faculty meetings. And boys and girls, what, what you don't know is that the McVeigh faculty is always thinking about you, not just when you're at home or when we can't be together. And they made these for you so that I could use them on the morning announcements. So I love this one. Again, I don't know who this came from, but this is a great thought. It says, now come closer. It says, always be a little kinder than is necessary. Always be a little kinder than is necessary. And so really, what that means is that, you know, sometimes we're stressed. Sometimes we have a lot going on. It might be things with the computers now at home. And you're kind of full. It means that you're just, you need a little space. I understand. I get like that too. But when you're always a little kinder than is necessary, it's like in those moments that you choose kindness. When it's the hardest times, that's when the kindness really matters. So it's taking a deep breath and saying, oh, I'm just going to relax right now. And instead of coming back or letting my stress out, 
I try to answer the stress with kindness. It's always better to be more kind than less kind. Always better to be kinder than is necessary. So it's good to be, do a little bit, but it's better to do more. Think about that. And I'd love to know how you're being kind, what you're doing with your families. I love that you're keeping in touch. And boys and girls, we can't wait till you're back in front of us in our classrooms, not just here on our screens. And I know you can keep doing it, though. We'll keep doing because you're a mighty mind and you're a mighty kind, mighty mind. And boys and girls, every day is a good day to get smart and be kind to both each other and the earth. Let's have a wonderful day.